The first new AI tool for academic research is Research Kick. Look at this. Kickstart your research with Research Kick, and it helps you craft compelling research questions and find research gaps in minutes. So let's go all the way down here to how it works. So first of all, you generate a research question, you refine that research question, and then you find relevant research papers and identify research gaps. So this could be a little gap in the AI market for researchers where they just want to start a research project but they're so confused about what a research gap is, about what a um, reasonable research question looks like, and so I'm going to give it a go. And the thing is, this is not free. You have to buy credits, but the one thing I like about it is that you can actually buy one-off credits. Can you see that? Get more credits. Here we are. So you can buy an annual plan, you can buy a monthly plan, but this is what I chose, pay as you go, which is uh, $12. So that's what I used and uh, it gave me 12,750 credits. Let's see how that gets us. So what is your research project about? That's the first thing you need to give it. Let's have a look. Nano particle OPV devices. Okay, let's go generate and let's see what it can do with that very small amount of information. Three words. So the one thing that I like about this is that it's giving me generated research questions and it's given me plenty of options for me to think about. So it's auto scrolling, I'll turn that off, but you can see this is the sort of research question it generates. How do the quantum mechanical properties of nanoparticles influence the charge separation efficiency? Ooh. That's a pretty good one. So they're pretty detailed already. And it seems like this has already got a relatively sort of like good depth insider knowledge to this research field. These aren't just surface level options. I like that. Let's have a look at options, talking about that. Copy this question, refine this question, or match available literature. So I'm gonna go through and look at some of these. How many did it give me? 15, 15 potential research questions. But of course, that's not the final step. We need to make sure there's an actual gap in the research um, area. So let's go to this one, the effects of nanoparticle surface functionalization on the electron transport. Let's have a look at that one. So I'm gonna match available research. And then it says, where do I want to essentially search for? So databases, let's look at site, SciMeb, Google Scholar is in B, apparently PubMed, there's nothing in PubMed for me in my research field. So there we are, that is now going off to find research papers that could potentially answer this research question. So I like the way it steps you through sort of like all of the things you need to think about when choosing a research question. And now we wait. So we found 10 research papers, found 10 research papers and that's about it really so I'm just going to go on view and see what it gives me so it opens up now I'm going to get rid of auto scroll that's annoying um, it opens up these and it's a little bit annoying that it's in this weird kind of column that you can't just see all at one you know see all in one go so you have to scroll across which is a bit annoying but uh, yeah here we are it is unlikely and this is ultimately what we're, what we're interested in. It's this tab here. This should be made a little bit more visible in my opinion. It's unlikely that this research question has been adequately addressed by any of these research papers. Brilliant. We already know that this is a good research paper based on what this AI tool have found. So you can now go in and look at the most relevant research papers. And once again, it's got that annoying kind of thing here that you have to scroll across. I don't know why they don't make it full screen. You can go to lit maps, lit maps, lit maps, and that's obviously where you'll have a nice little um I thought it would give me a network map. It is not, it is just giving me this one. So that's not really what I want at the moment. Thanks very much. But you can see that it's got all of this site information, which is quite useful. Site and publication, supporting, mentioning, contrasting. So this is a good place to start your research studies. And you can see that that used 749 credits. So you get a fair amount of searching for your $12. And ultimately, that is the process of using Research Kick. If you want to go back, you can kind of look at different um, options, different things. Here's history, if I wanted to go back to the history stuff. So here, this is all of the things it came up with. So it does save it, which is great. And I can go back to any one of these questions and find out if it is something that I want to um, explore further and then use these to think about my research topic. A really great research tool, go check it out. The next research tool you need to know about is Goat Stack AI. Goat Stack. <laughs> Isn't that like the greatest of all time. I don't know why it's called goat stack. Maybe it should say somewhere. Oh, here we are. Does it say why? Goat, 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 
Goat. No, just <laughs> goats. Greatest of all time stack? I have no idea. But this is one thing that interested me was stay updated daily with vital scientific papers. Who doesn't like that? Just getting all of the data into your face via your emails because your emails are a place you can go to pretend you're actually doing work. This makes it a little bit less like that, I guess. So this is an AI agent that reads papers and sends you a personalized insights newsletter. Fantastic. Well, I did that. I put in my email and I ended up with this. When you first sort of like sign in, you get this um, uh, interface and you have to put in interest. You have to put three, you can either select them from down here or you can put your own one. So I put my own ones, I click next. And then how frequently? Well, I wanted it daily at the moment, but you can do Monday, Wednesday, Mud, Weds, Friday, Mud, Monday? I've never seen Monday, M-O-D. Check that out. Mod, Wednesday, Fry, weekly or bi-weekly. And then we've got OPV Digest. So I created my agent and then it's already there and I can only get one agent so I'm not paying for it so you get an error. But this is what you end up with. Um, you can also exclude keywords if you find that there's things that are really not related to your research field. You've got a custom instruction if you um, sign up to Pro. So here you can prompt your agent following um, extended personalized newsletter rules. I haven't paid, so uh, won't be able to do that. And OPV Digest, so here's the Digest, and uh, that's it. So you can see I've got a public uh, profile for this OPV Digest, and that's what I called it. Um, and you can see that, that uh, that's it. So there's all the information that I got. What does the actual uh, research look like? Well, this is the email that you get. So here, Goatstack AI, and it says, this is a paper that you should read, essentially. Now, one thing I like about this is it does give me a little bit more information than just a list of papers. Something like Google Scholar just gives you like a list of papers, maybe a figure um, if you're lucky or a, a graphical abstract. But here we've got, uh, yeah, you know, a figure and then we've got the key points, which I assume is generated by AI. So we've got this is the key points and then we've got a little bit of a summary. And it goes on and does that for one, two, three papers, which isn't bad because I didn't give it any warning. I just sort of like said, send me a newsletter and it did this right away. So it does actually do what it says on the tin. And I think this is a great why, great why? Great way to get all of those important papers straight into your email inbox. Go check it out. This next AI tool is two tools that have combined into one. You've got Kahubi and AvidNote. So here you can see that now combined Kahubi and AvidNote. I don't know who absorbed who, but ultimately this is a place for AI research. You can write, read, and analyze effectively. And so it's taken all of the research tools that Kahoot, no, Kahubi ad, I think, and put it into AvidNote. So when you should log in, you get this dashboard and you can work with documents. So this is a world-class document writer. So this is, um, I guess, the AvidNote side of things. And then you've get the AI research toolkit. So this is the old Kahubi stuff where you can increase your research productivity. Now, here's the thing about this tool is that they've mushed it together. And uh, I think there's lots of powerful stuff in here, but it's really hard at the moment to find exactly what is useful because it just seems a little bit too too muddled, a little bit too many options. There's no kind of streamlined process. That doesn't mean it's not really powerful. It just means that you really need to go in and have a look to see if this is useful for your use case and your AI toolkit that you're building out. By the way, if you want to know about how to build your own AI toolkit, go check out my course where I teach you how to build your own AI toolkit that will make your research far more productive for you um, using a load of free and non-free tools. So go check out that course. Now, Let's go back here. The first tab down, I've got all papers. So these are papers I've uploaded to Kahubi. And here you can see that I can start having a conversation with this document. Now, one thing about this is that you can't sort of, uh, you know, highlight here, for example, and say, explain this to me like you do in other AI uh, paper readers. You do have to copy and paste it in. So if I've got explain this text, I've got to copy this all the way across to here, which does, to be honest with you, get a little bit annoying. But nonetheless, it is, a very sort of like powerful answer and it's very quick and it is sort of like everything you need to know about what you've just put in there. It gives you a glossary of terms as well, which I really like. So not the best user interface, but something that uh, is very useful if 
um, you want to know about a research project and you're using Kahubi or Avidno anyway. And then you've got AI Toolkit, which is this bit. And this is all of the AI templates that you could ever think of in the academic realm. So we've got plan my lesson, grade this student. Well, I don't know how you uh, assist you in grading students. I'm not sure how ethical that is, to be honest. Solve problems, but then we've got education data, publish, ask. So suggest interview questions, suggest survey questions. This is really good if you're doing a survey for part of your research project and you just don't know the sort of questions you should ask. So you could use this as a prompt to generate those sort of like first creative ideas that you can build upon. Publish, create a research proposal, plan my study, further research. So all of these are pretty good on their own, but I'm not sure whether I'd use them in this kind of like really segmented way like they've got them here like if i was go here suggest a journal um, it's just like you know it's a little bit clunky i think nowadays with chatbots getting even more powerful and more user friendly you know these segmented templates maybe aren't as useful as they once were i say once were as if it was like years ago like just a few months ago this is moving so quickly um we've got ai transcribe which is really useful if you're doing lots of interviews and then you've got ai code and ai chat as well but you should definitely check this out because i think that if you find a tool in here that you really like it's well worth the subscription fee but also i think it has got the potential to absorb a lot of the grunt work of a daily academic life you just need to dig a little bit to find out which ones are applicable for you if you stay to this one you're gonna be rewarded look at this papertalk.io now this is a place where you can unlock the power of research. They all say something like that. Swiftly, simply, and smartly. A bit of alliteration for you. SSS. Oh, I like that on my mouth. But this is where you can upload 10 papers for free. And I was like, okay, what can I do with those 10 papers? Like you've got all your fancy graphics, core capabilities. You can search AI-powered understanding. But I wasn't actually very surprised about how useful this became. Okay, let's go to my library. And this is where you can upload papers. So you upload a PDF where you can search the ones you've uploaded. And uh, because I'm on the free tier, I only get 10 papers. But look, this is the first thing you get when you sort of like upload a paper. Check this out. Silver nanowires, single one carbon nanotubes, SWCNT. And Double up that speed, baby. All right, so this is okay. I don't mind it, you know, talk, paper talk. I don't know, that's probably the most annoying way to read a paper in my opinion. But let's start understanding and click this button because I think this is where it's really, really set out from the other sorts of reading uh, papers, AI tools. Yes, papers, tools for reading AI. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tools for reading peer-reviewed papers. That's what I want to say. How is that so hard? I'm just getting over COVID. It's brain fog. Brain fog. Okay, so here you can see you've got the paper, which is fine, and then you can listen to it once again by pushing that one. Um, but this is where I think they've kind of taken the step above other AI tools, and that is AI explanations. And it's quite wordy. When I first looked at it, I was like, yeah, it's quite wordy. I mean, might as well just read the paper at this point. But then you've got Ask Chatbot, and so you can ask things about this paper, which is I uh, like. But look at this, Apply Research. This is a button I haven't seen anywhere else. This Apply Research tab has got real-world applications, implementation guidelines, patent startup opportunities, collaboration opportunities, research advancement, creative leverage. So these are things that I think aren't talked about enough in research, and this just gives it to you on a tab. So I think this is really valuable and something that I think you should probably put your key papers into to have a look at this tab, apply research, real world applications, you know, patent startup opportunities. If you wanted to sort of take an idea to market, this is a great way to think, start thinking about that. Collaboration opportunities, research events, like all of these things just should be in the back of your mind um, as you're reading a research paper, if it's got real world kind of applications and uh, this will just help you sort of like formulate those ideas and the feeling and the importance or significance of certain research papers. So go check out Paper Talk IO. I think it'll be worth it. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the 12 free AI tools you should be using for your research right now. Check it out.